Shalom, 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 shalom. First and foremost, giving infinite praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahusha, Ba'ashem, Rechakodash, giving double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom and salutation to you, Sensei Akims, across the four winds, pushing this truth with sincerity of heart. I'm your fellow servant, Kasama God from the DC camp, coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahusha, Ba'ashem, Rechakodash, to feed the elect. All right. And this lesson, I want to go into the altar of burnt offering and, um, you know, just going into the fact and a point that is very important, is very critical that, you know, we are we be careful when we out there in the highways and the edges pushing the word of the Lord. When we making these videos of edification to the nation of Israel, so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans, in particular the elect, you know, you have to understand that, you know, when you what you do today as far as pushing videos and, and edifying a flock, what you're doing, you actually are at an altar. You're constantly at an altar of burnt offering and you offering a big sacrifice to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, to quell his anger and his wrath, you know, when he decides to definitely judge on uh, the virgin daughter of Babylon, aka the United States of America and really the entire world. All right. So that's why we put these um sacrifices or burnt offering. All right, so the offering has to be perfect. It has to be according to the the old ancient ritual that we had, right, with the with the priest, the tribe of Levi. But remember, the scripture tells you in Corinthians that what first came that which was you know natural, and then the spiritual. The ritual back then was supposed to be established in a natural uh, fashion, but ultimately it was meant to be understood. All right. And to be manifested in a spiritual fashion later on down the line in the end times, which we live in in the end times. OK, so very important. And it's critical because you got a lot of guys out there, you know, pushing the word, pushing the wrong word, uh, not breaking down the scriptures properly, pushing the scriptures out of malice to, you know, different things. And they don't understand that they're breaking a ritual that was set up by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh himself. You know, but because they're not, they're not actually um, building actual physical altars, they basically disrespect, you know, this basically disrespect the ritual because they lack the understanding of what the ritual looks like, you know, in this age. All right. In the end times. So, you know, and that's the reason why there's going to be a lot of judgments for individuals that call themselves. Uh, so-called prophets of the Lord, you know, they're gonna be judged, all right? Because out of any out of anybody, they should have they should have known what they were doing, but instead they decide to mock the Lord and not take this seriously. So let's go to um, without further ado, let's go to Leviticus chapter um one, and the subtitle says the law of burnt offerings. It says, and the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man, if any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offerings of the cattle, even of the herd, and of the flock. All right. And it says, If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. First. We have to understand the fact that in the ancient times, um, you know, the, when it comes to the natu the the ritual in a natural fashion, it was it was only really the priests of the tribe of Levi that could do the ritual. All right, so you had to bring, you know, your offering, and then they would basically uh, perform the ritual. But now, under the order of Melchizedek, when you go to Hebrews, under the order of Melchizedek, which we know to be you know, one of the reincarnations of the Hamashiach Yahusha, right? Now, any man, regardless of tribe, if he believes in Yahweh Bashim Yahusha, is ordained a priest, okay? Because Yahweh was not from a tribe of Levi, right? Scripture tells you, Hebrews 7 and 14, he was from a tribe of Judah, but he is the top priest, all right? <clears throat> so, now let's go to... Uh, Verse 3, it says, if, if his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. So this particular scripture, how does that manifest in 2022? 
All right. Well, basically, first, you you know, the um the offering of a male herd or flock or cattle without blemish is no longer um it's no longer necessary. I'm not going to say necessary. It's no longer um able. Right. It really wasn't back then, but the ritual just had to be done at that time. But the offering of cattle and herd cannot atone for your sins. All right. They cannot atone for your sins. You have to understand that they cannot atone for your sins. How do you know? Let's go to um, David's prayer. When David committed adultery and murder, okay, and conspiracy to murder, which same thing, really. Now, when you go to Psalms chapter 51 and 16, David, when he was asking for forgiveness, this is what David said. For thou has, for thou, he was speaking to the heavenly father, Yahweh, for thou desireth not sacrifice, else would I give it, else would I give, else would I give it, so like it, else would I give it, thou delightest not in burnt offering. So the thing is, is that basically what David was saying, because you have to read with understanding, what David was saying is that the Heavenly Father delight no longer on this particular type of burnt offering, this particular um, aspect of burnt offering this particular ritual was no didn't no longer satisfy you know Yahweh Bashim Asha the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Now what's satisfying to his his you know to the Heavenly Father Yahweh is what? Is what he always intend, intended the altar of burnt offering to be about. Alright? And what we know without a doubt is that what? That male without blemish Became who? That was his son that he sent. You know what I'm saying? Yahweh Shah that he sent to die for the remission of our sins, our true atonement. You know, as we kept the day of atonement, basically we understood, you know, in, in this in this age in 2022, we understand we understand fully what the day of atonement truly uh, uh means. We understand truly how to perform the altar, how to perform our um you know, the burnt offering at the altar. Okay. <clears throat> and how do we do that? Basically by spiritually offering that male without blemish, which is Yahweh Shah. Basically putting them on the altar and, and cooking them. But what do I mean by cooking them? It's spiritual. It's like spiritual food, spiritually eating them. It's by studying the word, right? Studying the word of Yahweh Bashim El Shah. And going out there and pushing this word out and how he's in the edges and pushing this word perfectly, okay, 100%, the way it's supposed to be, with no malice, no alternative thoughts and or intent of the heart, but with pure sincerity of truth, okay? And that is the law. You're supposed to do that. When you come in, when you come, when you're going out there and how he's in the edges with a different mindset, and you're going out there because of malice. And you breaking down the word of Yahweh Bashim Asharal. You putting out garbage on a burnt offering. And you will be judged because the Heavenly Father, the main reason why you offer this is to quell the wrath of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. When you say, oh, Yahweh only, basically, it's like you showing up. When you say Yahweh only, it's like you showing to the altar. And there's nothing on your altar. But yet you expect the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, you know, to be satisfied and to not destroy you for your sins. You know, you can't do this without Yahweh Shah. He is that male um, offering. And also when you go back, it says one of the keys that says he shall offer it. This is verse three. It says that he shall offer it of his own voluntary will. And that's very important because Paul spoke about that. Let me get that. Um, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17. Actually, I'm going to start at 16. It says, for though I preach, because that's what it is now. The altar, you know, it's the, the, the burnt offering. It's the preaching of a Dehamashak Alshah, preaching the male lamb without blemish, which is the Dehamashak Alshah. 1 Corinthians 9 and 16, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Why? Because if I don't do this, the Heavenly Father Yahweh is going to destroy me because he's angry. 
So how do I please the Lord? How do I uh, quell his wrath? It's oh, it's kind of like when a woman, when a husband is angry uh, um, at his wife for maybe she, you know, she kind of like slacked off on something, you know, when wise women, wise wives know to have a great meal, you know, his best meal waiting for him, you know, when he comes back. So that would kind of like make him not be as upset as he would have been otherwise if he came home and found nothing. You know, so first Corinthians 9 and 16, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe, destruction is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Destruction is unto me if what? If I don't bring the, the male of uh, the male cattle or sheep without blemish on the altar, what's going to happen is destruction is going to happen it's for you. Yahweh only Israelites. Destruction. Woe unto you if you don't what if you don't preach the gospel. Woe unto you if you don't establish the male lamb or sheep or herd or cattle without blemish on the altar. Okay. So going back to well, actually, we're not done. Verse 17. For if I do this thing willingly, there you go. If I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. All right. So now when you go back, that's why these scriptures link the, the you know, the, the New Testament, the, the, the Old Testament and the New Testament are all linked. And the New Testament helps you basically understand the full. You get the full understanding of what the Heavenly Father always meant in the Old Testament, but it wasn't meant for Israel back then to understand. The understanding always lags behind. Wisdom and knowledge comes first, but understanding always lags behind and comes at the end. All right, so Leviticus 1 and 3, it says, If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle. What's the door of the tabernacle? It's talking about the highways in the edges and pushing these videos and being pushing it 100%. Okay? And when you do that, guess what? You offer it just at the door of the tabernacle. And the doors really represents, a, you know, the minds of, it, of the Israelites. You know, because that's what it is. When you preach the word, you don't preach the word to the Heavenly Father Yahweh. The Heavenly Father Yahweh gave you this wisdom. What makes him satisfied? What makes him, um, what makes this meal, right, this offering pleasing unto him is that you basically healing your brother, your neighbor, your brother, your Israelite brother, by giving him what? By giving him the food that he needs. And what is that food? It's a fully well done, well cooked you know, male, what? Male without blemish, lamb, herd, which in this case is representing what? Yahweh Shah. All right? Feeding him Yahweh Shah and the faith in the Mashiach Yahweh Shah. Verse 4 it says, And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make it to make atonement for him. That's very important. All right, that's very important because he, you got to understand something, you know, and this is something we understand and we've understood over the years, you know, besides the fact that, you know, we hopeful elect. I mean, there's certain things that you got to do in this gospel day in and day out, week in and week out, year in and year out um, to continue to be accepted. You know, brothers don't just be in the truth for years, beginning with our apostles and elders, just because, you know, there's certain things that, that we do, there's certain fuck ups that we do. And and there's certain things that we have to overcome and, and the certain mistakes we make or whatever. But the reason why brothers keep, um, you know, are, are maintaining in the gospel. Why? It's because brothers always know through the spirit that we are putting this ritual. All right. We're putting this ritual and we put we we, bur we always put in the what a burnt offering on the altar to appease to appease the anger of the heavenly father, Yahweh. And every time we're able to overcome a trial of tribulation, guess what? It means that what? It means that our um, burnt offering was accepted. As a matter of fact, let me go to, uh, this is uh, Psalms chapter 20. And I'm going to go to um, Psalms chapter 20. Um, I'm going to start at 
I'm gonna start in one. It says, um, to the chief musician of uh to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the Lord Yahweh, hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the power of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt offering. And that's very important. Salah. Accept thy burnt offerings. The thing is, it's like just like Abel and Cain. You have a lot of Israelites call themselves teaching the word of the Lord and, and, and out there in the houses in the edges and, and and you know, but they all their burnt offering are not being accepted and they are totally unaware. But we know because when your burnt offering is accepted, not only do you remain in the gospel, but also the most high will keep feeding you with more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay? And you you and the growth will be seen. All right. Man, listen. Things have not changed. Well, they have, but it's just now we're getting a full understanding. So now let's get back. Um, <clears throat> so it says, um, verse 5, it says, And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord and the priest Aaron's sons. Right? And the priest Aaron's sons, because now spiritually we are all Aaron's sons spiritually. What do I mean? Like I said earlier, regardless of tribes. You know, we become priests under the order of Melchizedek. All right. It says that he shall kill the bullock before the Lord and the priest Aaron's sons shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood around about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall flay, and he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. So that's what I meant by. See when that when again it's when the husband comes home and when husband is angry you gotta feed him a well done well cooked meal, and then it says you gotta cut it into pieces. What does that mean to cut that meal into into pieces? Well, that's when you go to uh, to get a better understanding. Let's go to uh, Timothy. No, I had it right here. No, nope, that's not it. Not that one. There you go right here. Second Timothy chapter two, uh, verse fourteen, subtitle and and sh and 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 shame workmen. It says of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the sub subverting of the ears. Hearers, study to show thyself approved unto the Most High. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right. So now when you look up the word uh, dividing, it goes back to the word divided means to separate into parts or pieces. All right. To separate into part of pieces, meaning what to cut into parts or pieces. Thus, when you go back to um, Leviticus, when you go back to Leviticus, Chapter 1, verse 6, it says, And he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. And that's what we do out there at the highways in the edges. We cut the words. We, we rightly divide the word. That's why in Great Millstone, you know, we, we say, we get in with our apostles, we got the 100% truth. And then we rightly cut, you know, cut it into pieces. So that way, so it could be better understood by the hopeful elect. We give them the milk and the meat. Okay, we give them the milk, then the meat. Okay, it said verse 7 And the sons of Aaron, again, representing the men of the Lord, regardless of tribes that believe in thee, Amashak Yahushah. And the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. Verse 8 And the priest Aaron's sons shall lay the parts, the head and the fat. And order upon the wood that is on the fire, which is upon the altar, which is again, these are all ways of how we break down the words, how we do our lessons. You know what I'm saying? The things that we talk about, like I said, in order, they, you know, this the, the way you're being taught in this truth, things have to be done in order. All right. So that's what it's going into. Verse 9 it says, But his but his inwards and his legs shall he wash in water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And that's what I wanted to go, you know, focus on too. A sweet savor unto the Lord. Now when you look up the word, um look up the word savor, 
All right. The word savor means what agreeable fav flavor, agreeable smell, pleasure, delight. So when you out there in the hobbits and the edges and, and you know, you letting those words out of your mouth, the Holy Spirit better be on you because if it's not, you're going to be out here saying a whole bunch of craziness. All right. And you got a lot of guys that are going off out there in the hobbits and the edges and they are not sending out a pleasant savor to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Why? Because they're not really sacrificing, you know, say, the Hamashiach Yahushua properly out in the highways and the edges or in their lessons. But some way, somehow, in the back of their mind, they believe that their, you know, their burnt offerings are being accepted. But then they're, they're going to find out soon enough because all hell's get ready to break loose. And that's when you're going to find out if your burnt offerings this whole time, however long you've been in this truth, you're going to find out soon if your burnt offerings was all what was accepted by the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Okay? So now, let's go to... Um, <clears throat> we had some precepts speaking about savor, right? Uh, let's go to... <clears throat> we're going to close out soon. This is Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. It says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. So the, the salt of the earth is talking about the elect out of the nation, out of the nation of Israel. Right? Because when you go, because you remember it's it spoke about what? The savor. If the salt has lost its savor. Now let's go to um Second Corinthians chapter 14, and this is where we're gonna end. Second Corinthians chapter 14, it's so like chapter 2, verse 14, and it says, Now thanks be unto the most high, which always causeth us to triumph in Amashak Yahusha, right? That male without blemish, that lamb, and make and maketh manifest the savor. Of his knowledge by us in every place. That's how you know, you know, the salt and the earth and the savor. The savor of his knowledge. All right, so it's the knowledge. It's the wisdom, knowledge of understanding. And how do you get that? By believing in the Amashak Yahushua. Once you believe in the Amashak Yahushua, you basically are already given. You're being given the knowledge, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding. Now, it will come with time because it has to be delivered through time. But you immediately gain access. Why? Because you put out the burnt offering on the altar. So I'm going to read that again. 2 Corinthians 2 and 14. Now, thank, thanks be unto the Most High, which always causeth us to triumph in Hamashiach and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto the Most High a sweet savor of a Mashiach Yahusha. There you go. For we are unto the Most High a sweet savor of a Mashiach. In them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death. And to the other the savor of life unto life. Yeah, I mean at the end of the day. When we preach the word, we preach a Mashiach Yahusha. We preach about the fact that Yahusha is going to come down here and he's going to deliver his elect. But in the same token, he's going to come down here, you know, and he's going, he going to destroy, he's going to cook this place, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It says, and who is sufficient for these things? Verse 17, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of the Most High, which the word of the Most High is the Mashiach Yahusha. It is that um, male without blemish, but as of sincerity, but as of the Most High, in the sight of the Most High, speak we in a Mashiach Yahusha. And this part, this verse is powerful, and that's what we're going to end end on because you got, again, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's a part of it. You got a lot of Israelites out there that are not performing the ritual of burnt offering on the altar spiritually the way you're supposed to and they but yet they've been sent strong delusions into believing that their burnt offerings is accepted of the heavenly father Yahweh. 
But when all hell breaks loose in the day of judgment, which is starting, we've been in the day of judgment, really, but in the final hours of judgment, when all hell breaks loose and death comes and, and the pale horse, you know, is released upon, you know, on the virgin daughter of Babylon, that's when you're going to realize that the whole time you thought you was out here making a burnt sacrifice, but you had nothing on the altar. You were just burning air. You know, and hey, listen, us hopeful elect, man, we hope to not be those men. That's why we have to continue to be in sincerity and humility, you know, always, always receptive, always be receptive. That's what the scripture says, a tender, the scripture speaks about a tender, a delicate heart. That word tender means receptive, always receptive to correction, rebuke, you know what I'm saying, and, and enlightenment. All right, so that's the lesson that I have for uh, for today. You know, I hope. You brothers, sincere brothers, with uh, edify, and you few sisters that do listen. You know, um, Bakate Hawa, Bakate Yawasha, Bakate Hawa, Bashim Yawasha, Bashim Hakodash, double honors to our apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, Shalom Salutation to you, sincere Akim, to cause the four winds pushing this truth with sincerity of heart, performing your duty on the altar of burnt offerings. Kasama Gal from the DC camp, Shalom.